This episode of Fragbox TV is brought to you by the world's most beautiful nano reef tanks. Start your reefing adventure at reefcasa.com. What is going on, my reefing fam? Arch here. This is Fragbox TV. Welcome back to the channel. Okay. What is going on today? You may already notice that something is very strange about this video. And you would only know that if you've been watching some of our other ones. The camera is really steady. Why? <laughs> I'll show you why. Hold on. Because I'm using a tripod. Which is not normal. And you wouldn't know that, like I said, unless you've been watching the channel. Usually it's like this and March gives you some motion sickness. If you're new, hello, welcome. This is a store here in Toronto that specializes in, ta-da! saltwater aquariums just like this one here what am I gonna do in a moment I'm gonna do one of our glue down videos which means I kind of walk you through coral placement and talk to you about why I've chosen new corals to put into our 90 gallon mixed peninsula reef tank here in the store and why I've decided to place them in the areas I place them in the hopes that maybe some of my commentary will help um, new reefers out there or maybe old reefers and um, kind of give you some insight onto where to place corals, why to place corals, why I work the way I do and why my brain funks, uh, wor works in this funky sort of way. Okay, but usually there's no tripod. I don't really like these things. I like to be... Um, free flowing and we'll kind of walk around the store and tell you about what I'm thinking and you know sometimes something will catch my eye like this beautiful mantis shrimp and then we'll go kind of down this rabbit hole about talking about why you should have a mantis shrimp in your life because it's probably my most favorite thing in the store right now is a stupid little shrimp and I never thought I would say that but that's how a sidetrack works that's how ADHD works and nothing is ever supposed to be on top of this here we have very few rules in the store. One of them is delight the customers. Number two is don't leave your shit, especially these, and nothing is allowed on top of this acrylic overflow because it costs 250 bucks to laser cut and I don't feel like replacing it and I know that one day somebody's gonna mess it up and leaving things on top is how that happens. Okay, great. We got two side tracks out of the way. Um, actually, I needed these. That's what I was looking for. I need these. These are our trusty coral clippers because they help me cut the bottom off of the plug. So, if you ever notice that frags come on these funky plugs, which are really useful for us, me, stores, people that use egg crate. When you go home, they're freaking awful. You don't want to see plugs in the tank. It's hard to glue the stem down. So a lot of customers ask us to ching ching, snip the bottoms off. I am in the middle of prototyping a new plug, should be available soon, which I think I'm going to call Easy Snap. Um, so basically it's going to be very, very uh, much thinner uh, stem on the plug so that you can you guessed it, easy snap with your fingers. You won't have to use um, that thing. So I'm just prototyping different materials as well as different thicknesses and lengths of this stem here. I'm sorry if this sounds a little boring. If you're new to reefing, you don't understand the plague of these stems, how useful a frag plug is, but also how awful it is to cut the bottoms here. So I hope that'll come out soon. And then you guys can see our new Reef Casa easy snap frag plugs. Just better, smarter thinking. Who does that? Is that Dyson? Which commercials? Comment below. It's just better, smarter, think oh, what am I thinking I'm thinking I think it's a Dyson commercial anyways let's hook this thing up on the tripod actually before that why don't I show you which corals I'm gonna glue down and which ones I've chosen for the tank step one is coffee we don't worky without coffee it's Sunday evening I should be at home with my dog and girlfriend but no mmm I'm obsessed I'm obsessed with reef keeping and I love my reefing fam so we make videos instead no this is kind of my working time this is sort of the best time for me is after the shop closes because um just less distraction i have the whole shop to myself i'm not kind of like bumping into customers and staff and the phone ringing it's already hard enough for me to focus as it is if you haven't already noticed in the first four minutes of video why did i open this to turn off the pump so we're going to go to our mobius app which has been working really well recently you know what shout out ecotech ai whatever you guys have done on your back end here it's working pretty good. Um, I had some connection issues in the beginning. I'm having a pain in the butt issue with a light downstairs made from a company called um, Reef Factory in Poland. And I'm this close. Well, I'm going to take the light off because it's not working. And I'm going to give them a very honest review. I'd like, I'm, I'm still trying to give them a chance to sort of uh, provide service, help, rectify something. I feel bad because they sent me the light for free to test and review. 
and just shy of the one year mark, the thing starts flickering. I want it to be good. Like, I like the color rendition on this reflare light. I like when there's competition. I want these guys to have a competitor. Um, I like the build quality. The app is clunky. The service right now is at a at a standstill. So that's gonna really, really influence the review of the on, on that light. But I'm still, I'd like to give them a chance. Um, it's not looking very good so far. Okay, what I added recently, which you didn't see and I didn't do a video on, is this feather duster. I don't know why it was speaking to me and I said, you know what, I don't have any, I just wanna keep it. Now I'm gonna keep this purple green trumpet coral. This is from our last order. Um, I know it's not like super striking. We just got in a bunch of Australian corals and there's some beautiful ones. Why would March pick a stupid purpley brown trumpet coral? Because it is nostalgic. And now I am an old man of 33 years of age. But when I was a youngin, when I was 16 years old, which is like weird to think about it because that's, if you do the math, it's like 15, uh, 18 something years ago. Those were very prevalent. These were super popular. We get trumpets all the time. It's just not the case. And um, I find myself, the longer that I do this and the longer I've been in the hobby, that corals that have just like, like classic corals like that just become more and more appealing to me. Stuff that I kept in the past. Maybe I'm just trying to live, relive like my childhood reef tank dreams. I don't know, but the piece was speaking to me and I don't usually find like nice size colonies of it. And it's just a funky coral. It's a cool LPS. It's branching, which is a little bit uh, weird for something that isn't aggressive. So usually when I think branching LPS corals, my mind immediately goes to Euphilia. So we're talking hammers, frog spawns, and torches. Uh, I guess Duncan is another type of branching, non-aggressive LPS. And then Trumpet, the way it grows, it's just really, it's a really unique shape. And I like things that are non-aggressive because they're not gonna kill each other. So, you know, if I'm being a little bit lazy with trimming, like right over here, we have the toadstool kind of gently um, flirting with the tortusa, it's not really going to do any damage to it. Now, if that wouldn't be the case here, if it was the hammer against the tortusa, we would be um, in big trouble. I did just lose a Duncan to, I, I call it lazy reefing, you know, stuff's looking really good, they're getting close, and I'm like, yeah, I'll get around to it, but this is one piece I wouldn't have to worry. Where am I going to stick it? Um, I'm going to give it some room to grow. It's sort of medium light. I'm sort of getting really full in here. This stupid Tyree pink lemonade, which I love, is taking up so much prime real estate. It was a little itty bitty piece left on the rock and it decided two years later that it wanted to start growing and I don't want to bother it. So I'm just gonna leave it there. Hmm, you know what, it's tricky. I'm really, really running out of space. Maybe, Um. I don't know. I kind of wish I could get commentary from you guys as I do this. I'm thinking maybe right there, I see a little tiny piece of real estate in this dense jungle of coral, right next to, I don't know where that toadstool came from, and this photosynthetic Gorgonian that I'm in love with, right on the edge, right there, might be a good spot for it to kind of grow. It's not in immediate danger of the hammer coral, and it's not going to sting anyone or get stung or really shade anything out because I don't have anything down here except this bounce mushroom which lives in that cave. So I think that's gonna be the go-to spot. Let me grab my trusty glue. That's another thing I'm prototyping. Oh, exciting news. All this new stuff coming from Fragbox slash Rayfasa. Um, I love this glue, but it was out of stock for God knows how long and we were at the mercy of them, but this is as my preferred glue. So I started prototyping glues with a bunch of companies overseas and trying different viscosities and types and thicknesses and bottles. And I'm gonna try and come out with, uh, well, I'm not trying, we are going to have uh, uh, our own glue. And uh, a lot of exciting news. You know what, look at this, this too. After popular demand and 15 years of dicking around, I've been just giving it away to customers that ask what is in it. Uh, it's March's super secret coral sauce is what's in it. But that's gonna come out too. This is something I've designed really for zoanthids, mushrooms, everything eats it though. You could feed it to LPS, you could feed it to acans, but it's a mix of foods that I've kind of played with for the last 15 years and something that sinks. So when I'm spot feeding, I don't want something really light that's just gonna float away in the water. I want something that's gonna drop down into the mouth of the coral and what I put in this stuff really makes uh, the zoanthids react. So you'll see that come later. Let's get the glue going. Tripod set up right there, maybe right there. Is that a good spot? I really wish, you, like even if, we, let's say we did a live stream, right? I'd have to have a screen set, or set up somewhere in order to do this. And then I'd have to like read out your comments. I wish there was a way to like 
have it more interactive where it's almost like a one big group. Oh, son of a gut. One sec, I got glue all over the floor. Okay, where was I? Um, yeah, like one big group phone call. I don't know how that would work. I guess, oh my God, I am a disaster today. Let go of my shoe. Okay. My new shoes. Uh, I'm gonna do it here. Um, see what I mean about feedback? You could be like, yeah, March, that's a great spot. Or no, you idiot. And then maybe you see something I don't. I'm just gonna be generous with the glue and hope it sticks. This is kind of a funny shape. Maybe I should have trimmed the bottom a little bit. So I'm gonna go a little bit thicker with it. And then what I do is this thing I call, mm. But now you don't want to come out, now that you're done getting my floor dirty. Uh, I call it shimmying. I don't know if that's really the word, but as soon as it touches the water, it more or less starts to appear and creates this sort of like uh, barrier, bond, I don't know what it's called, but I kind of like shake it. This might have been a better use of epoxy for the size now that I'm kind of holding it. Because this is not a piece that's going to encrust on the rock. So really the glue is going to be the only thing. Sometimes you glue down a coral, and then as it starts to grow, it'll grab on, it'll anchor itself to the rock. This, as, as it grows, it's not going to do that just because um, the nature of this coral is going to grow up, and it's, not going to, it's just not going to anchor itself. So epoxy, probably, in hindsight, would have been better. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave it until it falls. How about that? That's what I'm going to go with there. That one's done. We have a couple other ones maybe I should have talked about first. Great, I glued the front of my tank. Lovely. All right, this whole episode is just brought to you by Nostalgic Corals. Um, this green Pasilopora is another example of not a crazy beautiful, but no, you know what? I'm sorry, I take that back. I know you have feelings. I know you can hear me. You are crazy beautiful. I think you're great, and you're so great, I've decided to find you a spot when I have very little room in the tank because you've been around in the hobby for a very long time. You're easy to keep. I like how I'm talking to it. You're an easy to keep coral, you know? You've never done me wrong. You don't peel suddenly when I look at you the wrong way. You're just happy. You're a good guy. You're just like a happy, easy going. You're like, the, he's like a Rastafarian of coral, you know? Just everything I read. He's just, he's just great. So we're gonna find him a spot. He likes light. He likes flow. This sort of coral is a hard coral, and I think next to the Tyree toadstool over on this side might be a good candidate, maybe in that little spot there where we have some little green slimer hanging out. I think I'm going to cut the base. You know what? No. You know what I'm going to do? What am I going to do? Hmm. I'm going to use my, one of our uh, frag cradles, our rock savers here. Frag... What am I saying? Frag savers. I'm going to use one of these in case I change my mind. You can grab these on our site if you ever need one. These are brilliant. Thank you, Alejandro, for making them. Screw you, Alejandro, for moving back to Colombia. We miss you dearly, my friend. Um, but the nice thing with these, if you, it'll hold the frag plug exactly where we want it. I don't have to trim the base. It looks a little funky right now, but as they turn purple, you really don't notice them. And I think the aesthetics um, are far outweighed by how useful and practical these things are. So without any glue, I can just take the piece. This is something I expect to grow quite quickly in the tank. It's always done really well for me. It's a, like I said, fast growing, easy to keep SPS coral. Same with Stylophora, but this one is the Pasilopora. And that's basically it. That's his spot, that rock's gonna go purple in no time. And then when I wanna take it out and frag it, it's literally as easy as boom, just taking it right out of there. You can buy them on our site at reefcasa.com. This is really feeling like a salesy, pitchy sort of video. It's not meant to. I just happen to sell a lot of the things that I like to use in the shop. And um, yeah, so that's it. This is a green Kenya tree. What, I didn't know Kenya tree came in green. Dude, yes, it does. At least, at least it does here in Canada. If you didn't know, this is filmed in Canada. No, we cannot ship you corals. Yes, more than 50% of our viewers are in the United States or in other countries. I think only 10% of the viewers are actually here in Canada. So none of these corals are really gonna leave here. Unless you drive here. A lot of people do drive up and take them home with them. Come pay us a visit, come say hi. I'm gonna go with this spot up here because I want to kind of make a leathery sort of little garden and they're not going to bother each other too, too much. I have the blue pineapple tree gently flowing in the wind with some Kenya, the traditional pink sort of purple. And I think this would just complement it nice. It's got the same sort of structure, but different color. 
And I just want a piece to showcase here in the store because I was growing this actually in the basement for a while. And the only problem I see with that is customers are not allowed in the basement, so they can't see it. So a lot of times, you know, we'll have a little frag available. There's a snail in my way. And um, I want to show customers what it's going to look like when it's bigger. Because I realize from a frag, it can kind of be hard to envision um, sometimes, you know, grown out what's something going to look like. So I like to have larger colonies on display up here in our tanks, like here. And over there so that if somebody's looking for Duncan and they say oh where should I put it or what it's what's it gonna look like I can just easily walk them over and say ta-da there's a Duncan there's a good spot this is what you can expect if you keep it alive actually Duncan is one of those corals very very hard to kill very rare that I see any customers have any trouble keeping Duncan coral um, super I would say yeah I would say one of the easiest LPS and you get lots of nice movement too. Like it's just so flowy and wavy. You get everything you want and expect out of a coral and it grows quick and you can't kill it. Okay, I am gonna glue the base of this one. And I'm gonna try my best here in this one not to get glue all over my freaking floor or foot. So let me just give it a little, I always call it like people ask how much glue. Glue, uh, like a teardrop. This is a little bit heavier because I really don't want it to move. And I'm gonna go with this nice flat sort of space right here. If he butts up a little bit against this Kenya tree, I'm, I'm not too concerned. I don't think they're gonna bother each other too much. I just keep an eye on it. We do run carbon in the system because they're soft corals. There's quite a few in here. Sometimes they can release a little bit of chemical warfare, a little bit, but it's a big system, so I'm not too worried. I don't think they're gonna hurt each other too much. I hope that they become friends because you know what? They're neighbors. Life is just better if you're friendly with your neighbors. So you guys are gonna learn to get along. Finally. We have one more and then you can stop listening to me and you can go listen to some of the other cool reefers out there like inappropriate reefer or oh danny's aquarium speaking about danny's aquarium and tidal gardens and other cool reefers if you're this far into the episode it means you find me tolerable which is pretty cool but um we're gonna get him over here from netherlands in to Canada, and then we're gonna get Paul from Advanced Aquarium Consultancy, then we're gonna get Patrick from Reef Wholesale, then we're gonna jump in my, my beater, old CRV, and we're gonna take a road trip from Toronto down to Ohio, and we're gonna go visit Tidal Gardens, and we're gonna do a podcast with him. We're gonna do a uh, four-way podcast. He's setting up microphones, really, uh, I think because I busted his balls and said, hey, let's do this. So he's setting up, he's turning the studio into a four-way, foursome of some YouTube reefers. So I hope you guys will enjoy that. We'll get a really cool road trip out of it. And the final coral I wanna to talk to you about is the um, fox coral. Again, boring AF. No, 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 not boring. I just mean that if you were to come in the store and you're looking to get like corals for the first time, I think the last few corals I just showed you are it's not really going to be something that you're you're going to be drawn to. People are typically not drawn to things that are not that bright. Um, but fox coral, for some reason in Canada, is quite rare. I have not seen one in a long time, and this one came up at a wholesaler at a friend's place, and I said, "You got to give me that because again, this whole episode is brought to you by nostalgic corals, and this is definitely one of them for me." How do you explain fox coral? It's sort of like it's sort of like, hmm, want to be elegant? It's kind of like, it looks a little cabbage-y, but it's not. It's, it's kind of like a cabbage, but it's, it's really not because that's soft. It, it kind of looks like an elegance, if you don't know what I'm talking about. These are elegance corals over here, which we just got a ton of beautiful ones from Australia. Let's go do some more sales pitches. I'm just kidding. You guys can't buy these because you're probably watching from Madagascar. Okay, check this out. Beautiful elegance corals. So they're kind of like that. But they're not, they're not quite elegant, but they're roughly, and um, they're just different. Elegants are quite common for us, we do see a lot. Um, some color variations are not common, like we had a red one once, or we might get uh, golden ones or yellow ones. These are very beautiful greeny sort of blue ones. Is my filter on? Is it? Oh yeah, it's on. Um, but fox coral, I, again, just unique, nostalgic. This is These are corals I grew up on, and that are um, becoming increasingly rare. So. Hmm, placement. This is a little bit tricky. Again, because I'm full, I don't think it's aggressive. I don't know for sure, but my mind says no. If you ever just have an idea or an assumption and you're not sure why you have it, this is one of them. I you know what, this side of the tank gets virtually no love. I'm wondering if I just tuck it under here 
sort of in that corner. I really got to save this for one or two more showpiece acros. I'm thinking let him do his thing and I really want to refraff Orange Passion somewhere in there. This is more or less Acan Garden. Mm. This guy's got crazy sweepers at night. I'm kind of afraid to go too close to him and I want to stick it upright. He's on his side right now so I'm I'm I didn't realize how tight I'm becoming here on real estate. I wonder if I just kind of stick them right. No, that's not enough love. I was thinking this. What if I just take it? And sometimes you get lucky and you'll just find a piece in the rock work that is just begging for the coral. And we just got clams in too. And I want to keep one of those. Um, no, that's not a good placement. That's not a good spot. He's going to bump up into this uh, endophilia. And they're not going to be happy. We don't want LPS corals really touching each other ever. Unless they're like truly of the same family. So that would be like Acanthostrea lordawensis. I know they got reclassified. I don't care. I'm going to keep calling them that. Acan lords. You can put them next to each other. Um, but really, LPS needs some breathing room. So that would not not be a good spot at all. Nowhere near the hammers because we don't want them to get stung. I guess maybe under here we could kind of dig some of this out. This piece would not mind being lower down. No, this would only work, I guess, if my sand bed was deeper actually maybe if I add some more sand I could just prop it up and leave it right here in the front hmm okay this one ras went psycho and has completely clouded up the tank I've decided to stick it here I'm gonna keep an eye on it I'm not sure about lighting um, I'm gonna keep an eye on it and kind of see how it does that's this thing with corals you sort of have to find the sweet spot. It's not gonna work for everyone. You know, we see these general guidelines online for like low light, low flow, medium light, high flight, but it's it's different from, from coral to coral and from tank to tank. So it, it's not always gonna apply. And sometimes you just have to try. And, and in certain tanks, you know, I've, I've decided, okay, this is gonna be my zoo garden. And we have a plan and a drawing and we think that's what it's gonna be. And then for some whatever, whatever reason, I put them there and it's just not happening. That is not the sweet spot. So you sort of have to kind of play with corals and frags. And then sometimes you get lucky right off the bat. And other times um, it's just a little bit of trial and error until you see, okay, that's where they're gonna go. In this tank, for example, our Red Sea Reef for 250, the zoo garden ended up being here. But that wasn't my first spot. I wanted them over on this arch. I don't know why. That's originally what I wanted was Zoe was kind of coming down, trailing down the arch, but it, it just wasn't working. Maybe it, the light was too strong. They, they don't need this, like the most light. Maybe the flow was wrong. It ended up being here. This was sort of our sweet spot and you can see how well they've done and grown into one another. And that's our Zoe garden. So um, it's not always up to you. Just keep that in mind. And um, sometimes it's, like I said, a little bit of trial and error. And what are you? You're not Bryopsis. Huh. Content. That'll be another video. Okay, we'll wrap this up. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. And I hope to see you back here on the next episode of Fragbox TV. Okay, bye for now.